Uh, we're going to cover a bunch tonight. And then <laughs> remember that our um, test, our exam is next week. So please try to attend. Um, please try to attend a review session this week. I posted the study guide. Did everybody see it in announcements? I posted it. It's like six pages or something crazy. So I will do a PowerPoint like I always do um, for our review. And so I, like I told you guys, I can't share that, but um, that'll be something good if you're sitting in the car and I know you probably don't wanna hear my voice again, but just listen to the recording because I will tell you, I will cover everything that's on there, okay? So um, if you wanna meet with me privately, I'm happy to meet with you guys. Um, individually, I've met with a couple of us. And so we will do that this week as well to review. Content is heavy for this one. Um, primary, secondary, and tertiary, of course, will be on there. So just be really familiar with those. When you're reading the questions too, what I need you guys to do is I need you to, um, as you read the questions, don't read too far into them. I need you just to read the question and it'll say which level of prevention is it and just simple, think about it, and then, um, you know, answer the question that way. But also for uh, uh, all that apply that thing, you know, make sure you're answering that question before you look at the answers, because that'll help, okay? Any questions about our test next week? No, I know, you can't believe it. We're almost halfway there, guys, though. We've made it. Uh, Katie Fultz, what am I looking like on the camera? Jen says good. Thanks, Jen. Elvira says good. I mean, you know, as good as one can look on camera. Like we all know what we look like on camera. Sorry, I see you, Professor Lonnie. This is Shanice, but I can see like on mine. You're coming in. I'm coming in. Yeah, it's I like see you, it, Shanice. So I need you to restart. Restart okay. your Zoom. And I'll let you in. Um, okay, we will take a quick attendance and then we're going to do a little review. We did environmental for this tonight, and we did um a little bit of epidemiology and we did a little bit of some other stuff. So we're going to make sure that we are all ready to go there. Um, let me take quick attendance and then we will move on and get working. Uh, Ivana. Here. Thank you. Camilla. I'm here. Steven. Here. Mary. Mary's not here. Uh, Alvira, where are you, Alvira? There you are. Thank you. Uh, all right. Um, Abigail, here. Okay, Yushana, here. Thank you, Sandra, here. Charity, sorry, I'm here. I'm gonna try to. My camera is still messing up. Obviously, I'm gonna try to. Um, I'm going to come back in on my phone. Yeah, that's good. If it's messing up, because our Excel yeah. will like get all weird on us. So make yeah, sure no, it's fine. I'll be, we're on there. I'll Sorry, right guys. Back. I know it's hard with Zoom and stuff. And sometimes we weren't on camera and now we all have to be on camera. So it's just crazy. And I apologize for last week. I think it was last week. My internet was acting all funny, but um, that should be all fixed. We had Xfinity here. I said, no, no, I can't have this. So, all right, cool. You here? Yep. Okay. And Chandra? I'm here. Thank you. Jen, I saw you. Passion? There you I'm are. Here. I'm here. Sorry. Hello. And Bridget? Here. Thank you. And Jessica? I'm here. Great. And Lindsay? Here. Thank you. Yogash? I'm here. Catherine? Here. And Shanice, you're here. Okay. So what I have seen, what I will tell you is, is that um, I have, um, reinstall Zoom to get my camera to stop glitching. Okay. So Chandra just shared with us that she had to uninstall and then reinstall Zoom to get her cameras to stop glitching. I think what's happening with it is, is that we haven't been on, like necessarily on Zoom during class time as much where we didn't have to have it on. So maybe these people's Zooms is a little off. I really don't know, but um, just things to keep in mind. Thank you for that help. Um, and we will make sure that we 
uh, take a look at that. I have everybody here in attendance except one person, so we should all be good on Zoom. Just make sure cameras are on, names are on, and that way we have everything. Um, all right, so we're going to take a look at environmental health tonight. Um, I posted a, a lecture for you guys on the content. It was a little shorter than some other weeks because really these chapters overlap tremendously. So um, our three chapters kind of we're covering the same content just with different contexts. So it's good to know First thing I wanted to show you was a quick video, and that's going to be on our environmental um, environmental things that we see. So let me share my screen, and then we will. Oops, I don't want you guys seeing my email. Hold on a minute. So we'll take a look at that. It's going to be a short video, and then um, we're going to work in groups on a little something else that I have going. And I want to cover a little bit of content tonight with a PowerPoint that I did because I want us to just be sure. I don't want anyone to feel like we're not getting our content in. I know it's hard because we're doing so much of the active learning. So, but there's just one thing I want to go over with you guys specifically so that we're ready and we know for our test. Okay, so I'm going to play the video. Widespread scientific consensus tells us the world's climate is changing. These changes are creating new health risks in communities across the United States. Extreme weather, unhealthy air quality, and disease outbreaks are becoming more frequent and more severe, affecting more people in more places. Changes to our climate mean our communities need to prepare for the health risks of higher temperatures. Extreme heat can lead to heat stroke, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, dehydration, and death. Anyone can be at risk, but some are more vulnerable, including pregnant women, people with harder lung conditions, young children, older adults, athletes, and outdoor workers. So how do we prepare for extreme heat? Communities can establish cooling centers, plant trees to lower urban temperatures, and educate residents on ways to protect themselves and others, such as drinking plenty of water and checking on older relatives and neighbors. A changing climate also means more frequent and more severe storms and flooding. That puts people at immediate risk of being injured or killed by debris, downed power lines, or floodwaters. After a severe storm or flooding event, possible health risks are contaminated food or drinking water, bacteria, viruses, and toxic chemicals in floodwaters, mold, and difficulty accessing healthcare services like emergency help, prescribed medications, and supplemental oxygen. In these events, older residents, people with disabilities, and lower-income households are more at risk. They may all have a harder time fleeing from a storm and may face more health risks if they can't evacuate. One thing we often miss? The mental toll. First responders who witness countless tragedies and residents who are forced to flee are more vulnerable to anxiety and depression, even those who have no history of mental illness. To prepare, communities can find out which neighborhoods, people, and resources are most at risk, upgrade infrastructure such as roads and sanitary sewer systems, and educate residents on how to stay safe during and after an extreme weather event, such as avoiding driving in flooded areas. As average temperatures rise across the globe, air quality can also change. That looks like longer and stronger pollen seasons, which can trigger asthma attacks and allergies, hotter temperatures and changing weather patterns, which can make air pollution worse by increasing the density of dangerous particles, and more frequent droughts that can lead to wildfires, which release dangerous pollutants into the air. Young children, people with asthma and respiratory conditions, older adults, and people with compromised immune systems are more at risk of being harmed. Work that can help communities prepare includes collaborating with community partners to set up health-focused air quality alert systems and educating residents on how to check alerts to know when it's safe to exercise outside. Now, let's talk about these little guys, pests. Change to our climate can also mean more risk of diseases spread by pests like ticks, mosquitoes, fleas, and rodents. With higher average temperatures, diseases transmitted by pests can multiply faster, spread to more locations, and infect people over longer periods of time each year. 
Lyme disease, West Nile virus, Zika, and Hanna virus are examples of the resulting health risks. People who spend extended time outdoors in areas where pest-borne diseases are common are most at risk. Communities can prepare by creating systems to track and assess population health effects and working with local partners on outreach strategies to help residents protect themselves, such as staying out of certain areas and using insect repellent. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is empowering health departments across the United States to prevent and adapt to the local health risks of a changing climate through the Climate Ready States and Cities Initiative. CDC's Building Resilience Against Climate Effects, or BRACE framework, helps health departments plan a coordinated community response. Using BRACE, communities are, one, identifying the range of climate impacts and the people, locations, and resources most at risk. Two, quantifying the health problems associated with a changing climate. Three, assessing science-based interventions to address those health problems. Four, developing and overseeing community adaptation plans. And five, evaluating the process to learn more about what works. For more information, visit cdc.gov forward slash climate. Okay, so we're gonna, oops, we're gonna stop right there. So this was a really good video because it touched on several different things that we had in our reading this week for um, about climate and what that can do. Has anyone done any uh, work with uh, Florence Nightingale? Have you guys read about her or know about her or anything like that? She was one of the first people who came across and said that people in war, they were in unwell-kept climates and that really changed their outcomes, right? So she did a huge piece on environmental health way back when she started. So something to think about, she's a nurse philosopher and some nursing schools practice under her. So interesting uh, fact to know there. So you guys had different topics that you read about this week. And what I'm gonna have you do on a jam board because we love them so much is we're gonna take a look at, um, we're gonna take a look at these different pieces. And I'm going to um, have you guys come up with three nursing interventions for each one. So we're going to use our ad pie and we're going to think about that because this will be something good we'll see on a test potentially. And we're going to make sure that we come up with three nursing interventions. Now, it comes out of your reading. If you guys just refer back to your books, which I know how much you like that, we're going to look into our books. And when I come into your rooms, I can share with you and we can all look at the book together to see where we get our interventions. All of this is in chapter eight. Okay, so here is our Jamboard address and I'll randomly put you guys in groups like I always do. Um, there are 19 slides on here. You are only going to use the first four, okay? So I just had um, some extra stuff that I was doing. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in the chat right now. And uh, that's to everybody. Please make sure when you're in the chat rooms because uh, Zoom knows this and they will, it logs you when your cameras are off. So just even if you guys finish early, you don't have to talk to each other the whole time if you're done, but um, just keep on camera and you know you guys can mute yourself or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna randomly assign you guys to a group, but I'm gonna do it slowly because I'm gonna be sending each group an email and it will be a case study. And we're gonna work on that when we're done with the Jamboard. Uh, actually, no, we're not gonna have the same groups. We're gonna switch it up a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna put you guys into your jam boards. Everybody on to our jam board. Let me see if I can get on there. Uh, we have a lot of people there. All right, so that's what you're gonna be doing. So the topics we're gonna to look at, let's just look, share the screen together so we know where we are. Group one is going to be doing air and climate change. Group two is gonna be doing water and land. Group three is going to be environmental health risks we see in children. And group four is going to be talking about the environmental laws that were covered in our book, okay? Good thing to know about what are some organizations that help us with environmental health? This is a random question to everybody. What are the kind of organizations? The EPA. Sure. Um, Who else? What's an organization that helps us with lots of different things? What about Scott? OSHA and NIOSH? Mm, well, OSHA does safety in the workplace usually, but it's got three letters. CDC. CDC. Yeah. CDC and who else? 
Three letters again. World Two. Health Organization. World Health. Health. Very good. Yep, your World Health. Charity, your camera is off. Um, all right, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to go and find three interventions, okay? Um, I'm going to send everybody to a breakout room and group one will do one, two will do two. You know how we do this. Okay, so hold on. Let's go to our breakout rooms. And I'll sign automatically to four. And I want you guys to be referencing back to the book if you get stuck on something, okay? Here we go. Uh, open all rooms, there we go.
All right, let's see. Let me stop sharing for a second. Yeah. Okay, we're all coming back together here. I don't know what's happening. Where's the rest of our people? Oh, they're coming. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I can break that room. I did. <laughs> All oh, right. I like that. Oh, wait, back, back. Back. Okay. Like, where are we? Okay. Yeah, you guys are back. All right, good work. You guys did a lot of looking there and you used your resources. I was really proud to see that. Good work. So I will share with us and look at our Jamboard real quickly. And we're going to see with our air and climate change, group one. What are you going to tell us about it? What are some air hazards and what are some interventions that we would do for air quality and climate change? I don't know who wants to talk, so I'll talk. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> so we put up like the, like for in home, so like the risk of like your carbon monoxide toxicity, make sure that you're checking like your batteries. I think they tell you to like check your smoke detectors and your carbon dioxide like twice a year. Um, like when you change the um, like time on your clock. So um, we added that to make sure that you get your furnace serviced regularly so that um, it reduces the risk of having carbon dioxide in your home. Um, watch when like burning stuff inside the home, make sure that there's like plenty of ventilation for like your fireplace and stuff. Um, so then we added the outside hazards of, um, so like we talked about like when they're, I guess it depends on where you live. Like if they're spraying the fields with fertilizers and stuff, um, they do that from airplanes or helicopters or around here, truthfully. Um, so to make sure that you're inside and don't really go out during the day, like while they're doing all that um, mm -hmm. to reduce like air pollution exposure. Um, we talked about when there's like air quality warnings that you're not supposed to like mow your grass or pump gas or go outside if you have any kind of like lung conditions or breathing issues I think until like 6 p.m at night is usually what they say mm -hmm. um and then we talked about cleaning inside your home to reduce um the risk of like pests or mold or like even your pet dander to make sure that your cleanliness of your house is is good and up to par Mm -hmm. um, but not only that, when you're yeah. using like cleaning chemicals to make sure that you have like proper ventilation, because um, mm -hmm. that could also cause a hazard within the house. Very good. And with our climate change, where are we going to see that impact? You don't have to answer, Jessica, but climate change. Think about where are we going to see that impact? What groups are we going to be concerned about with the climate change as things are heating up? Uh, so is it like pregnant and old people? Yeah, yeah poor elderly around. children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're really going to be worrying about everybody with climate change. And this is a big thing. Has anybody noticed um, impacts of climate change on your environment where you live? I noticed more COVID outbreaks. Do you? Lately. Yeah, I know. Me too. I've seen a ton. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but let's hope it wasn't something. I don't, I'm not even going to say it. Uh, who knows why we're having more COVID? We, everybody got the vaccine, but then there's all kinds of things going on in the world. We don't know what's going on. So is that part, you know, it's getting warmer. So they say in Colorado, it's been the coldest winter since 1972. So I don't know about climate change here, but I do know like on the East coast, they don't get that kind of cold that they had been getting. So we worry about that for what kinds of ve vegetation are we going to worry about when we have climate change going on? decreased yeah you're gonna have stuff that can't grow anymore right because it's too hot or too cold or whatever or your air quality is poor okay good work on air and climate change we know we're going to be watching for our ventilation systems we're going to be checking with our patients making sure they know air quality warnings um 
All right, we're going to take a look at water and land. Oh, look at this one. You guys were on it. All right, water and land. What do we know about water and land? What are some interventions and some things we're looking at with water and land? Okay, so we were talking about how like <clears throat> water quality could be affected, like depending on where you are, and where you have access to water. So we were concerned about like educating people about water testing, um, if not like with water strips to like have access to companies that do common test out waters. Um, Good, you guys concerned. spoke about something in your group that I thought was important and it's well water. I thought yes. that was a good one to bring Maybe. up with the well water. Yep. Go ahead. Tell us about that. Okay. So, so Katie was mentioning about how like well water. Um, Katie, what were you saying? I'm sorry. About well water. Um, so it's very deep. <laughs> that put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> so, some people don't know, like if they've never lived out in the country, they don't know that you're supposed to get your well checked because of runoff mm. from pesticides and fertilizers and all that stuff, or, you know, they don't, they just don't have the resources for it. So you have to educate them on that. Yeah. And it's really important because um, there's a lot of contamination that can take place with well water. Right. And um, we also talked a little bit about pesticides and how that will impact our water because we put these pesticides out to make things grow. But in the meantime, they're killing other things. So what is that going to do to us as people? Uh, we do worry about the impact of the chemicals on our food, on our produce, on all those kind of things that are grown outside, right? Okay, and also our meats, because think about the cows. If the cows are chewing on the pesticide grass, and then we're taking the meat to eat, you know, we're taking the pieces of the cow to eat the meat, then we have that problem. Um, all right, so educate on water testing, I like that. Exercise was another one that sometimes you forget about with water and land, but some of the land doesn't have like places for them to ride their bikes or to run or something like that. So we're gonna make sure we're encouraging growth and um, growth and land where we can do our um, exercise so that we reduce our, uh, our obesity concerns. Okay, good job. Environmental health risks in children. We know what about environmental health risks in children? They're at a um, higher risk for basically being exposed to everything. Um, we talked about lead, how certain things like older uh, water, older um, kind of just like walls and stuff in homes, paint, things like that. They're more exposed to as well as um, things such as fish where there's higher mercury in certain fish and being able to discuss with the parents how important it is for them to get like those omegas, but also understand which fish can cause a higher toxicity of mercury poisoning. Um, yeah. Do we remember what uh, fish has high mercury? Tuna. Yeah, tuna is gonna be a big one. Uh, go ahead, somebody else was saying something. Yeah, so just to piggyback on Abigail, also think collectively as a group, we were looking also at how especially like lead, we know back in the day with toxins that it also can um, produce intellectual disabilities. Um, with our children as well um, being affected, we talked about. As yep. we and leaving. lead is still around. So just remember that, even though lead is something we think of from like a long time ago, there's still plenty of lead present around in our world. So something to be really careful about, and there's a picture in your book, and I'm sure you guys think about lead. Little people like to eat paint. I don't know why they think it's fun, but think about that. If you have older paint somewhere, then they can certainly ingest that lead. We're going to be doing what kind of screenings on our kids Anybody who has toddlers, you get this drawn. Lead yeah, it's a lead, lead screening, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a lead um, screening. And then also another one is like basically just with air quality and pollution, um, especially with kids with asthma, being able to instruct the parents, you know, that certain 
Certain areas could either exacerbate symptoms as well as the temperature and the climate. Like if it gets hotter, um, kids who have asthma are obviously more predisposed to exacerbations in those areas. Good, and something to remember about kids in general, even if they don't have asthma, about the respiratory system, it's smaller than adults. They're closer to the ground. So that respiratory system is not as developed. It's not able to cope with the same kind of exposures necessarily that an adult is because of their actual size and because how close they are to the ground. So really we worry about our rural children in uh, with our pesticides, right? Because they're very close to the ground there. All right, good work. And then our last one was environmental laws and our group worked hard on this one. There was a chart and Jen said it was on page 144, right? 149. 149, thank you. And this is where they gathered some information. That's a good chart to take a look at. So I want you to tell us, your group, anybody in there, tell us about some of the laws that are um, in effect right now. Or organizations that are helping with laws. Go ahead, Chandra, you were really good on this. <laughs> Hold on. What was the question? I didn't give me one. <laughs> it was tell us what environmental laws you found and some interventions that you guys came up with. So, I we found out the Clean Air Act that regulates air emissions from area stationary and mobile mobile um, sources. Um, there's also a law that prevents pollution. I don't, let me see what it says. Pollution Prevention Act and it, hold on. What and are we going to do as nurses with our pollution and prevention? We're going to include practices and teach people how to um, recycle and how to um, like save on resources, like shut your lights off. Sustainable agriculture. Okay, and remember our reduce, reuse, and our recycle, that's really big in environmental health nursing. So we're gonna try to reuse as much as we can. We're gonna try to reduce consumption of our products and we're going to try to um, make sure we're putting that into practice. So we wanna make sure if we're looking at labeling of pesticides is something on here, which was good. And we know that we're going to be teaching our people. Uh, who are we teaching again about pesticides? Farmers. Farmers. Pesticide workers. spend so much time outside. Yeah. Anybody who's around it, good. Okay, so environmental laws will help us and that's why it's a good thing for you guys to know about. Um, and we're going to take a break for right now and we will come back. I'm going to, how should I do this? We're gonna, uh, I'm gonna send a case study out to, everybody's getting a different case study and we are going to work on them together as groups. I will, randomly assign you guys, but I'm gonna email them to you. They are Word documents. You don't have to print them out. What you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna be, it's a Word document. You're gonna be able to type right on there. And then we're gonna talk about the case studies as a group when we come back. So we will come back at five o'clock set, six o'clock, seven o'clock, whatever time you are. Um, Mountain Standard Time will be five o'clock my time. So that's uh, seven minutes. So just leave the cameras on, you guys can mute and I'll see you in a few minutes.
All right, we're coming back. We have like a minute. I didn't email you guys the case studies because I think I'm going to change it up a little bit. Maybe we'll do it as a class as opposed to breaking into groups. Let me take a look because I have a couple different case studies that I want us to really investigate and think about. But before we do that, we're going to do a couple little, little quiz, just a couple little questions. And you guys can write your answers in the chat if you want. Um, I'll give you a minute to answer the questions. Okay, we have a minute to come back together. So let's just, I'll share my screen in the meantime. Please don't forget we have um, a review tomorrow, exam review. All right, first question. Everybody put your answer in the chat here. A nurse is assessing potential environmental health risks in the community. Which of the following would be the first step the nurse should take? I'll try to make it a little bigger. Hold on. Oh no. There we Okay, so which of the following would be the first step a nurse should take? So several of us picked B. I'm going to randomly call on somebody who picked B. Charity, why'd you pick B? You're correct. Um, I picked B because um, it it gives you a um, a wider look at the community as a whole. Good. What you're right. And that whichever whichever group of people, yeah. Good. You're assessing potential environmental health risks. Risks. Our first thing when we're looking at any community is going to be figuring out two things, the boundaries, where it starts and where it ends. And we're going to do a windshield survey. We drive by and see what we see, right? So good answer on that one. All righty, here we go for our next one. I'll go down if I can. Why is it not moving? A nurse who works at the local hospital asks a public health nurse what may be causing her hands to become very sore and sensitive. Which of the following would be most appropriate response by the public health nurse? I'll give you all your choices. Can you go back up a little bit just so I can see the question again? Sure. It's Sorry. what would the yeah, what would the public health nurse Torin say? Okay. You guys are doing awesome tonight. Question answers, the answer, the correct answer is check the material safety data sheet on any chemicals you have used recently. Why would that be the correct answer? Because that sheet is going to list any information about any chemical that you need to know and like what to do. Yep, and very good. And it's going to tell you some side effects, right? So that you may be able to determine, oh, it's this that I've been using. I don't know. I had a friend who worked in healthcare with me and she would have this terrible rash on her hands and she worked in the OR and she went to every dermatologist under the sun. They couldn't figure out what it was. They thought it was an allergy. They thought this, that, the other thing. They actually looked at the safety data sheet on the soap and it was the soap 
that was causing her to break out like that. So she was scrubbing her hands in the soap all the time. And then she was having this rash. So good. All right, we have one more. Oops. Which of the following were, which of the, I'm trying to enlarge it for you guys. Hold on. Which of the following represents secondary prevention for lead exposure for kids? My oh, I'm feeling really good about your test. All right, which of the following actions is secondary prevention? Let's just see. Almost everybody got the answer right. And let's see. Passion, tell us why D is the right answer. <sighs> Passion, are you with us? I'm sorry. I always have it on me when I start. No worries. No worries. I Tell us why D is the right answer. You kind of kind of because it's like screening. Yes. Tell me what is A. Um you guys can help her if you want. Meeting with local government officials to request primary. the city clean up. That's primary, yeah. All right. So everybody thinks this is primary. Okay, so meeting with local officials to request that the city clean up a hazardous, vacant lot. What do we have already? A problem. That's first year. Very good. Very good. And that's okay, because I'm glad we had that, because I want you guys to think about that when you're reading these kind of questions. So if it had just said meeting with local government officials to request a city cleanup, we could have been okay with primary, right? But we have this dirty lot already that's hazardous. So you got to treat it, right? So that's going to be our treatment. Referring a child with toxic levels to a neurologist, what would that be? For Sherry. For <laughs> Great, because that's treatment again. Teaching parents of a two-year-old about the dangers of lead-based paint in older homes. Primary. 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 Okay. Yep, we're teaching. We're not saying they live in lead-based homes. We're just teaching them. Good. So by process of elimination, and you guys are all correct on this, this is a screening tool that we use on kids, like I said earlier, um, on toddlers particularly. Okay. So good work on that. Um, these are the kind of questions that I would sort of prepare yourself for. These are not questions off the test. I promise you that. But they are some questions that will help guide you a little bit in your study. So good. I'm glad you guys did that. I have a little PowerPoint that I'm going to share with you because I want to go over environmental. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, our epidemiological triangles. So just give me one second because... I have the wrong PowerPoint up, of course. Um, so we're going to have epidemiological triangle is what we're going to take a look at. And this is important. And it was in every chapter that we read this week. And the reason for that is because it's pretty important. We're going to see three parts to the triangle. Does anybody remember the three parts? Anybody remember? No. Uh-oh. That's not good. Okay. It's going to be our host, our environment, and our agent, right? When we take a look at this uh, epidemiological triangle, and we do this because this helps us with epidemiology and to figure out why and where things happen. Oh, hey, now, this isn't what I was sharing. Hold on. Um, so it helps us figure out why and where things occur and what's causing that to occur, right? So when we take a look at it, we have our three pieces. We have our host, who's going to be um, part of it. We have an environment, which is where things are surviving. And we have our agent. And our agents are going to be those things that are going to be um, causing a problem for us. So we look at things like bacteria, like poison, like smoke, like nutrition. Then we look at our environments. Are they, what is the temperature that's there? What's the altitude? Because altitude changes breathing dramatically. What's our crowding, our housing, our neighborhood, our water, our food, pollution, noise. And then we look at our host and our host is going to be that one that um, is going to be the who of the triangle. 
So we're going to see it's the who, which would either be a person um, or could be an organism of any sort that can be impacted by our environment and our host. So know that they are all interchangeable. You'll see that continuous triangle. Center is triangle is uh, time. And this is what epidemiologists always work against because nobody ever has enough time to figure out why things are happening. But when we think about things like the COVID, uh, COVID virus, and I use that only because everybody's familiar with it. What do you think were some of the things we took a look at with our environment? I know that they said that um, temperature wise, that it doesn't survive well in hotter areas Good. and warmer areas or warmer weather. Yes, that was one that, that was one thing. Yep, for sure. So that's one piece of environment. Look at this one again. What other things did we know about with our environment and who uh, like, was uh, most susceptible? The yeah. homeless population and those uh, the immune compromised in a homeless community or homeless camp um, mm -hmm. and then being able to spread it more so mm -hmm. yeah those people in crowded areas like a poison i mean a prison uh we also looked at our host when they were saying who's vulnerable for covid what kinds of things were you hearing was who was vulnerable for it like your elderly morbidities like diabetes <clears throat> heart failure Asthma, age, obesity, um, older adults, very young children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we looked at our age. There wasn't much about uh, gender on that one. So that was an interesting one because they didn't really determine men or women were more likely to get it. And I don't know that they've ever done uh, studies to see that, but interesting to see. But older men we're having bigger complications from it. So interesting piece, but that was never proven with evidence-based practice. That was just experimental practice. Um, and there then we- was such a cool, did y'all see like, um, there's a cool um, commercial is out with pink in it that's actually about COVID and they're actually tossing like COVID um, bacteria thing across to each other because pink has asthma and it's like, they're kind of tossing it. I thought it was a really cool new commercial was out this weekend on it i haven't seen it but that is a good one and that's pulling into like having pink on there that's having like think of all the people that want to see her on a commercial like young kids want to see her like you know everybody wants to see these stars on commercials right so great thing for, to pull people in for to learn about and educate so see how as community nurses we don't necessarily have to be in the community, but we can do teaching on a TV, we can do teaching on the radio, we can do it in community centers, we can do it in homes, we can do it anywhere. So very good. So I do want you guys to be very familiar with these three pieces, our host and environment and our agent, and that they all are interchanged. And if you, a question may look like something like, give me an example of an agent, okay? Something like that, or such and such is an example of a environment or whatever, okay? So that's really important. That's, we touched on epidemiology this week. You guys did some reading on it. It was just an introduction. I will tell you week eight is all about epidemiology and um, it's really the study of why and where and what happens. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing here and we're going to take a look at the case study as a group, okay? So what I need everyone to do is participate as best you can. So the way we'll do this is via chat, okay? Because I don't want everybody shouting out at the same time. It gets kind of difficult. So let's take a look at a case study that I have here. Okay, can everybody see it? Sort of. All right, who wants to read the first paragraph? Because I'm tired of talking. Mary okay. Miles is the is somebody else going to do it? Go ahead, go. Mary Miles it. is the first epidemiologist. Epidemiologist, good. It's a hard word. I have trouble with it too. Uh, for the Warren County Health Department, a local church contacted Nurse Miles when several church members became sick after the annual church picnic. Of the two hundred people who attended the picnic, one hundred were ill with diarrhea nausea, or vomiting. 10 people require emergency medical treatment for or hospitalization. Incubation, incubation periods range from one and a half hours to 30 hours with a mean of six hours and a median of three and a half hours. Duration of illness range from one to 80 hours with a mean of 30 
in a median of 15 hours. Great. Keep going, somebody. The annual church picnic. The annual okay. church picnic was a potluck lunch buffet. The menu included macaroni casserole, turkey with gravy and stuffing, potato salad, green bean casserole, chili, homemade bread, chocolate cake and cookies. Nurse Miles interviewed the church members who were ill and found that three food items were significantly associated with illness, turkey, gravy, and stuffing. Okay, just reading that alone, think in your heads, what, what of those three, now this is just without reading anymore, which of those three sends off a red flag for you? The turkey. Turkey. Good. And um, I want to say, uh, uh, Stephen. I don't know why I want to call you Joseph, Stephen. But anyway, <laughs> Stephen, tell us why. What's turkey? What's that make you think of? So it's poultry, which would be a bird. It has to be cooked at a certain temperature. If it's not cooked thoroughly, especially if they put stuffing in it, that can create the bacteria to multiply and make people sick. Good. What do we also know about turkey if we put it out and it's hot out? It goes bad. Yeah. E. coli. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, but we don't know anymore. Keep going. Uh, somebody read the next one. Chandra, Nurse, you want to read it? Or go ahead, whoever. Shanice, you can read Nurse, it. Nurse Miles interviewed family who brought the turkey, gravy, and stuffing to the picnic. Review of food handling procedures indicated that the turkey had cooled for four hours at room temperature after cooking, a time and temperature sufficient for bacterial growth and toxin production. Furthermore, the same utensils were used for both the turkey and other food for and after cooking. Good, and our last little section here. Nurse Miles. Nurse Miles trained the family and proper food handling practices, emphasizing hand washing, proper cooling methods, and preserving better equipment and ut utensil sanitation. Nurse Miles also offered a similar class to the church congregation. Okay, what kind of parish nurse is Nurse Miles? Is she institutional or she's congregational in this scenario? We don't know what she does other than just this scenario. Congregational. Good. Why? Because she's going to teach the congregation as a whole. Right. And what do we know about institutional con uh, institutional parish nursing? Who are we involving in institutional? Just people in that in that institution, schools, prisons, okay. things yep. like that. Yeah, more widespread, right? We're not just dealing with the congregation, we'd be teaching everybody, right? Good, excellent. All right, so question number one, for the nurse to evaluate why the people of the picnic became sick, what questions should she ask the people who brought the food? So you're gonna put this in the chat for me. Okay. Think about what kinds of questions will we ask these people? How are we going to be therapeutic when we ask this question, though, so that we use effective communication? You guys can call that out if you want. What's a way we could phrase this so that we're not saying to the people you did something wrong? You would use an open-ended open -ended question, right? Yeah, like, like what? So they would elaborate on, um, like, uh, when you make your turkey, um, how do you like to do it? Or good. Um, what's what's your preferred way of making making a turkey? Mm -hmm. Or can you share? Right, they always want to share. So that's a therapeutic right. word we like to use. Can you share? Blah, 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 blah. Good, very good. All right, let's look at some of your questions and see how they prepare the food, what they use in the food hygiene. Yes, that's a good one. Come on, cursor. Expiration date of foods, important. Who are we going to worry about with expiration dates, particularly? What group of people? 
the elderly. Yes, thank you. Remember, they forget to look at their expiration sometimes. All right, did you keep the turkey refrigerated prior to cooking? Did you wash the turkey? Okay, so we're thinking about what are we getting off of the turkey? How'd you prepare it? What are the ingredients? Chandra, tell us about the ingredients. Why is that important? People may be um, allergic to it or that ingredients were not stored properly and they used that in the food. Good. Where was the food stored? What if they said the food was stored on the counter? What other questions are we going to ask? How, How long? long? On the counter? Was the counter How long? Clean? Yeah, it was a counter clean. Countertop. If it was Does your cat sit on the counter? Right. <laughs> they live okay. the <laughs> Has anyone been sick within the home? Good one. We're going to see if maybe this is something that's widespread. How long did it sit out? Was it stored properly? There's expiration again. Good, good. Um, all right, good questions here. And then we're going to take a look at our next question. So we really want to investigate here. How'd they cook it? Was it done in a clean hygiene hygienic kitchen as best as we can determine right we're not going to go to the house and look at the counter because a we don't know what it was like looking like when they had the turkey on it and b we're hoping that they've cleaned it since then but if we go there and it's still dirty from the turkey we kind of can figure things out right and then we also want to look at the source of the water that we used right in our cooking because we thought about that what if there's something in the water maybe it was a contaminated water supply okay all right, so then we look at our identifying our agent and our host and our environment in this study. So I want you to think about that because we just talked about this. So what could be some possible, there's not one right answer here anyway. What are some possible things for our host? You can just say H dot dot, E dot dot, and P dot dot, uh, yeah. Post. Let's take a look what we're getting here. Alrighty. Agent, possible bacteria in the turkey, host, the turkey, environment, probably left out too long. Uh, agent, pathogen, host, congregation. Yeah, the host is going to be uh, the people that are taking it in. So anybody who ate the turkey, the gravy, the stuffing, whatever. So a host is the turkey. Good. You guys all kind of got, well, host is the turkey. Well, the host is what is one of the one of the things that could have been right. Remember, host is going to be the people. Actually, host is not going to be the turkey, the poor turkey. Um, what was our thinking on why the host would be the turkey? Yeah. In our epidemiological trial, a lot of you put host as the turkey. So I just thought it's like the agent as like possibly the bacteria or whatever that infected the turkey or grew on the turkey yes so then like kind of the bacteria took over the turkey in a way okay so our bacteria on the turkey is definitely our agent okay but who are the people that it's impacting the people that got sick yeah the, people, the congregation the host remember the host is always the person that the person or organism that has the troubles or is susceptible to the troubles okay and then we look at um, environment. What was it cooked in? So we take a look at that. And was it poor? Did, was it left at room temperature? Those kind of environments. We're not going to know, but environments is going to be pretty broad because it could be any of them, right? It could be, was it poor handling? Was it that the kitchen was dirty? Was it that the utensils were dirty, right? So we really have so many options here. That's why with an environmental an epidemiological triangle, I want you guys to work on that because I really need you guys to understand that they all work together. 
So we're not going to have our host is not going to be the thing that's making people sick. The thing that's making people sick is always going to be the agent. Okay. And then we take a look at two definitions that I went over in our um, lecture this week, descriptive epidemiology or analytical. Right. These are two good words to know for a test if I were studying for one in the near future. Are you looking for an answer? Yeah, put it in the chat. Oh, okay. Um. I will give you guys a clue if you're forgetting these definitions, which is completely normal and possible. This word has the word describe in it. And this one has the word analyze in it. Okay, how are we doing with this one? I'll take a look. God, you scared me, Mom. Good. We're somebody put D. What is the disease? Oh, descriptive. Yeah. Okay. So it is the answer is some some of us got it correct. So I'm gonna call on somebody who got it correct. You're gonna tell us why you're so smart. And that would be uh Lindsay, why'd you pick analytical? Because when I looked at the definition, I thought you were asking for both definitions, sorry. So, but I picked analytical because we already know that people are sick. So we're just trying to figure out what caused it. Like, All right, so remember with analytical, we're analyzing. It's our how and our why, right? So that's going to be analytical. So we're trying to figure out how and why. Descriptive is going to be a much more specific. Descriptive is going to be, we have this big case of people and the distribution of disease, death, and other health comes across a period, according to person, according to place, and according to time. We're really trying to describe what's happening here. We're not trying to describe the people. We're not trying to describe anything about them. We just know that we're analyzing how this happened and why did it happen, right? I want you to remember back in the case study, what is she doing? It's what level of prevention is she doing? Remember, she's training the family in proper handling practices, emphasizing hand washing, uh, proper cooling methods and pre pre preserving better equipment and utilization sanitation. I was afraid of this. Okay. Shanice, tell us why you picked primary. You are correct. It is primary. Tell us why it is primary. I said it was primary because she's educating um, the individuals, you know, of how to not um, have this occur for to um, actually be more susceptible to this. So to stop, as we said, it was analytical. We we're looking at the data so that we won't have that um, greater percentage anymore. Individuals will now know how to properly cook, what temperatures they should use, things of that nature. And washing is important. Okay, do tell me something. Is proper okay. hand practicing and is hand washing going to do anything for the sick people? No. Too late, right? You're not going. You're not treating them. Or is is there any treatment going on here? No. Just straight right. educating. 
Yeah, you're straight off trying to prevent it from happening again, right? We are doing yes. no treatment with our community here. And what we do know is with our secondary, we would be screening. Are we screening anybody? Nope. No. Right, and we're not treating them. So by process of elimination, if we didn't know any better, it would be primary. Does that make sense to all of us who pick tertiary? Is that a little clearer for everybody? This tertiary was the dominating answer. All right, very good work on that tonight. So I need you to know for um, this week, uh, our hosts, our environment and our epidemiological triangle, were there any questions on the reading? Any questions on the reading? We know that we have a review next week. I've gotten many emails about our, um, our uh, infectious disease. And so I'm going to take a look at what we have due this week. So everybody knows our assignments, of course, will be on time. Let me just pull it up. Um, Let's take a look, here's our thingy and here's our modules. And we are on week five. Week six will be our exam. I will tell you at week six, we will turn on assignment grades as well. They are shut off for right now. Um, we are at week five. We have a discussion post, which uh, is due by tomorrow. Very strict, I put it in the announcements, what I expect for our discussion question. We're gonna have our, um, we have a nice little case study, similar a little bit to the one we did tonight, similar. Um, so we're gonna do that case study. Remember, you're gonna be answering two of your, uh, two of your classmates by, oops, by, Wednesday, by Sunday. We're gonna make sure we have two, at least two of our APA formatting in our responses. Cause I noticed in our last, uh, our last discussion post, some people didn't use data to answer some of the questions. So saying, I agree with you, I disagree. Remember, that's not gonna be enough for our answers. We also have our study, um, sorry, just going back to our assignments. And you have your NCLEX review questions as well, which will populate in the grade book. So just make sure if you're redoing them because you're taking this a second time, um, it should allow you to pick you select new questions or whatever like that, okay? Um, any questions at all? We're finishing like nine minutes early because I shared the case study with everybody. So let's do, you guys want to do a Kahoot? We can do a Kahoot. We did one last week a little bit, didn't we? All right, let me find another one real quick that we can do. I have another case study, but I feel like you guys are case studied out. Um, let's see here. Anything exciting going on this week for anybody that you'd like to share with the class? I'm sure there's something exciting. No? Anybody going to- tomorrow? Yes. Whose birthday? Steven. Steven, happy birthday. We all have to sing to you now. Ready? And the count of three, we'll all sing to Stephen. Happy birthday. Oh, you guys can unmute. They Come on, don't make me sing. Yeah, unmute, count please. To three. Don't make me sing by myself. You didn't Ready? count to three. One, two, three. Well, don't want me to sing. Okay. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Have a nice day tomorrow. I hope you don't have class tomorrow. Are you off tomorrow at least? I work and then I have, uh, it's not clinical, what is it? Lab oh, and sim. Lab and sim. That does not sound like a birthday to me. But I know, what are you going to do? You got to do it. Everybody's got to work. Um. All right. Let's, I'm just trying to find a candidate for us. You know what? Super Bowl on Sunday. So that's right. <laughs> I hope nobody has a study session during Super Bowl. That would be awful. What do we think about Super Bowl? Who's going to win? Chiefs. Raise, oh, I'm all for it, Mary. Chiefs. Raise your hand if you want the Chiefs. 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 Woo! Woo! <laughs> no Philly fans. Ooh, just no. kidding. 
<laughs> Who thinks the Eagles are going to win? That will make my Sunday miserable, but. I think the Eagles uh, are going to win. No, oh, no. I know. I'm afraid of the same. My I nephew know. and my niece will love that. That's their team. <laughs> so some people love it. I'm a Dallas fan, so I'm not happy with this. But, you know, whatever. We made it pretty far. That's all I can say. Okay. I am having a hard time pulling up the queue, so I'm not going to keep you guys here any longer. We're six minutes early. Uh, take this six minutes and do some reading. Okay. Let's everybody go and do some reading for six minutes. Okay. Good week, everybody. Please go study. Print out those study guides when you come to the review sessions. Uh, we'll go over them. I have a PowerPoint that I'm presenting because I just find that's helpful. Um, but please contact me if you need anything. Okay. Everybody else have a great week. Steven, celebrate your birthday just a tiny bit. Piece of cake or something, right? <laughs> All right. Have a good week, everybody. You too. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.